one gotta admit, this looks absolutely epic. Wow, what a view. This is just a testimony to how I work. There is still light, so I can get another composition. So, time to hike a mountain. And the main reason to hike that mountain is to get a view over Kvalvika beach. And it's supposed to look very dramatic very epic. So the hike is not supposed to be that long, it's just there's a lot of elevation. But uh, let's see how that goes. This is also the first time I'm testing out my brand new backpack, the brand new Shimoda. So I'm curious to see how that one holds up compared to my old backpacks. As you know, this is only my second time to Lofoten and it's the first time I'm on this hike. It was very easy to find. Simply just follow the signs. You drive to the small town of Fredvang and then you follow the signs that leads to the hiking of Ruten all the way in the end. And there you pay, well, a day ticket is 50 Norwegian crowns. At the top of my head, that's probably like six, seven, maybe eight dollars. And then you just follow the path. Very, very easy. And also very fun walking on like a little bridge right now. As of 2018, this area is also a no drone zone as it is a national park. To my big regret, I wasn't aware of that before I saw the sign halfway up the hike, so you might as well leave the drone in the car. So if there were a linear relation between effort and photo quality, this would definitely be one of the better photos. Ooh, <laughs> this is hard. This requires quite a lot of stamina. So. But it's a, it's a fun hike, especially with all these bridges you're walking on. It does make it quite a lot easier to get through the muddy paths. With the release of these new videos from Lofoten, I've also released my landscape photography location map with all the locations I have and will visit in this series. If you want to go to Lofoten and want to save some time on planning, be sure to get it via the link in the description. So I'm not entirely at the top yet, but on the way up I found this stone down here, which works perfectly as a place to stand and look over the beach. Looks really epic. So I use myself in the foreground and I just put my camera on the interval timer. So in that way I can just let it photograph while I walk into the scene. And then obviously it uh, gets a photo of me and I don't need someone to push the trigger. So yeah, a fairly simple shot. Zooming in a little bit just to, to get me and then the beach and the mountains in the background. Nothing special about the settings, just aperture priority, f11, focus on the foreground grass, and yeah, that's it. What is not to like here? This looks just absolutely epic.
the last part here is just super, super steep. Like it was steep in the beginning, but this, I think this is the worst part. Oh, the problem is not the distance. The distance is not too far. The problem is definitely the height. I wonder how far up I am. It's like 500, 600 meters ish. <laughs> it's a stunning view, like absolutely stunning view. So you can actually see the bridges of Fredvang here in the background, where I flew the drone in one of the earlier episodes, which is two years ago. So yeah. So, but the last part, I can do it. The hike towards the top of Rüden is not something you just do. Even though it's a relatively short distance, the hike gain is about 540 meters. If you're not used to hiking, that is a hard endeavor to undertake. My legs were pretty sore for the next four to five days, so come prepared. So I'm almost at the top and I found this little outcrop here in the background that I use, place myself on it and then get a big epic perspective. I'm not entirely sure it works. It's a little bit hard to say because the foreground is kind of messy with all these rocks here. So yeah, got to see when I come back to the computer, but uh, the view surely is epic. So I did make it to the top, but I gotta admit, I wasn't too fond of the view and the perspective. I've come like 100 meters further down again, and I found this outcrop, which works way better for me. I've changed to the wide angle lens, so I can have the mountains over here within the frame also, and have the beach and have the background here. Sadly, there's not really any clouds on the sky, even though the forecast did predict it, but uh, well, that's just how it is. I am getting some beautiful sunset light and colors though instead, but uh, yeah, it is one big grand view. So another thing that's really good by using the 12 millimeter is that I can have this foreground down here and Having the sun coming in from the side, it is getting lit like rep in a repetition, pa repetitional pattern, in a repeating pattern down through the rocks. And it leads, it creates a very strong visual flow into the scene, into me standing down here, and then into the background mountains. So looks really, really great with a 12 millimeter, even though the scale isn't like on, on point, it's, it's very hard to see how big this place really is.
also this is just a testimony to how I work there is still light so I can get another composition I just can't sit down chill out be happy with the photos I got I am happy with the photos I got but if there is a chance to get another one why not so I'm running all the way down to a point I passed on the way up just need to find my way down here and hopefully that will also be super epic the Sun will come down in like 25 20 minutes so hopefully I have time What's up? Not sweaty at all. <laughs> so this is definitely the most crazy perspective of, of the day. My camera is all the way up there. <laughs> and I had to walk all the way down here. So I'm tiny, tiny in the, in the frame, but it gives just such a crazy perspective. As I only had one chance because the sun is coming down so fast right now I just had to like decide should I go for a wide angle where I included more of the foreground or should I just use this ridge where I'm standing as the foreground and I just went with the ridge because when I'm out here making photographs generally I want to come away with a lot of different photographs so I don't only have like the same kind. I, I much prefer to have a little bit of everything. Some long lens, some medium and some wide angle shots. And in this case here, it's just a 24 millimeter to include everything. But I got the 12 millimeter shot further up and I had a long lens shot in the beginning of the hike. So in this way, I get a little bit of everything. And uh, yeah, it has just been such a crazy hard evening but it is so rewarding standing here at these insane cliff walls they can definitely match the Faroe Islands there's something different with the granite here the stone looks different in Norway than it does in the Faroes it's a uh, I don't know how to describe it and as you've probably seen on the b-roll already there's some whales out here so yeah it's just super amazing being in nature like this ah <sighs> ah yes now we can relax As I mentioned earlier, I have released my landscape photography location map of Lofoten. Just like my maps from the Faroe Islands and Iceland, it is easy to use and incorporate with Google Maps. In that way, you always have a handy map by your side and I have added my own photos for inspiration. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I will highly appreciate both a like and a comment.